I found the following article in April 1968 publication. My earliest recollections were the sawmill days along the Black River of northern Michigan. The horse-drawn sleds piled high with logs were brought to the sawmill operated by my grandfather, Nelson Hunt, and on occasions by my dear petite grandmother, Emily Hunt. Some logs were floated down the black and stopped um, near the mill by what was known then as a boom, an arrangement of s uh, single logs that somehow kept the fields of logs securely in place until the loggers could pull them in. Huge chains were then attached to the logs to make them ready for the sawing process. Other indelible memories deal with the combined fishing and berry picking sojourns we would take uh, we would take three or four families, would all pack up enough supplies to last for three or four days, and then headed by horse-drawn carriages for the northern wilderness and happy lazy days of camping and picking the delicious wild sweet and juicy blackberries or huckleberries. On one of these trips, when I was about five years old, my grandfather took me and a couple of children fishing with him. Other members of the group had gone berry picking and the camp was left vacant. What a surprise greeted us on our return. It had been wrecked by marauding pigs. No, pigs didn't run wild in northern Michigan, but these particular ones belonged to an elderly prospector. A still vivid memory concerned the big canvas frontless shelter which was erected to sleep in, and I remember how the men took turns sitting up all night keeping a huge bonfire going to ward off any bears or wolves that did run wild in northern Michigan at that time. During this era, the home was indeed fortunate that uh, held one of the Edison's new talking machines. My Aunt Luella was one of the fortunate ones. This glorious, mysterious machine was a delight to all of us youngsters. As we delighted in the uh, can-shaped records and listened to Uncle Josh, oldsters of that day would shake their heads and say, what will they think of next? Then to school and bring home notes to tell of such spectacular events as the box social, and to sneak around while <clears throat> the old maids of 16 and 17 would artfully cover the shoe boxes in all tones of crepe paper, ribbons, hearts, and flowers to beguile the young swans of the day. Many were the um, offers to betray the colors and decorations of a pretty sister's or aunt's box. I remember, too, the boardwalks of the small village where we lived and the bark off the trees which was used on the, the roads much as gravel is used today. Playthings were few and far between and lucky indeed was the girl that received a doll even on Christmas. These dolls always had bodies made of white kid skin, that is if they were not the famous China Jenny type. Of course, we all got hand-knitted mittens, and not a few received hand-knitted uh, hose, which bring to mind a woman wore black cotton or uh, Lisley hosiery and side-button shoes. Everyone owned a button hook. Stores would have uh, boxes piled high with wares from such places um, as China, and the cases would be wrapped in uh, grass matting. A penny's worth of candy could still fill a small bag, and the bag itself was a delight of colored strips. Children of those days were fairly secure on the streets if they were alert to the ever-present chance that they might be run over by an occasional horse and buggy or team that came along. Strange as it seems, more people than a few were really killed this way. Fall would bring preparations for barn dances and husking bees. The corn husker, who husked an ear of, corn, of Indian corn, <clears throat> had his pack, or pick, excuse me, of the pretty girls in the crowd to kiss and also the pleasure of the first dance. This was usually a square dance or um, shootish. Oh, many are the delights of the bygone years when you sit down and hearken back to them, but for now, I think I have painted a little of what childhood held for me, and I have found a real pleasure in doing so. And this was written by Mrs. Doris Killick of Burke River Rouge, Michigan.